Midweek Pictorial, January 29, 1920. Latest word in auto comfort and convenience. The automobile has many uses, and one of the most recent is shown in the accompanying picture of a little home on wheels, in which a fortunate couple are touring California, the pictures being taken near San Diego. It makes the owners independent of hotels, slow trains, and landlords. The idea of the car is a compact miniature home, which can be attached to an auto and whisked along from place to place at any reasonable speed. It is constructed strongly but lightly of wood, and is weatherproof. It has a kitchen, pantry, toilet facilities, icebox, cloth and bedding lockers, electric lights, running water system, seats, a table, and even a tent for the comfort of the chauffeur. When the car is opened for camp service, it can be made into two complete rooms with sleeping facilities for six persons. Exterior view of the camp car, which is one of the latest auto inventions. Perhaps in a less favored climate than California, it would lose some of its value as a hotel on wheels. But in those ideal surroundings, it affords a specially pleasant form of outdoor life. It can easily carry supplies for 30 days, besides a camp stove and kitchen outfit by which meals can be prepared in a hurry. It is a form of gypsying deluxe. Helsingfors, capital of Finland, as it appeared after having been recaptured by the Finnish White Army from the Bolshevists. The effect of cannonading can be seen in the defaced structures that face the water. The fighting here was desperate and the loss is heavy before the Bolshevists retreated. Their leaders escaped on a yacht belonging formerly to Tsar Nicholas. Admiral Nicholas von Horty, Commander-in-Chief of the New Hungarian Army. He is here seen reviewing a detachment of his troops. At his left is Captain W. E. Lucas of the United States military mission in Budapest. The Hungarian army of Bela Kun, the Bolshevist dictator of Hungary, after some initial successes, were badly defeated by the Romanians at the River Tais and driven back to the capital. It is now in process of reorganization. Last contingent of AEF who left Brest January 9th en route to the United States. Of the two million men who did such gallant service in France and Belgium during the war, practically all have now left European soil. There are other American forces on the Rhine, but they are of different personnel and organization. The AEF as a body has vanished. Help given to starving Vienna. The most pitiable feature of the war was the suffering that came in its wake to the little children of the conquered countries. The men and women can tighten their belts and endure more or less stoically the suffering for which they were in part responsible. But children are innocent victims, and the heart of humanity everywhere is rent when it hears of their cries for bread. In Vienna, more than anywhere else at the present time, the suffering seems to be centered, and observers agree that stark actual famine will be there soon, unless the world bestirs itself to avoid such a calamity. In Vienna, it is said 83% of the children suffer from rickets, and are so badly bulbous-headed that many are deformed. No children over one year of age get any allowance of milk. Children under one year of age are allowed one liter of milk a day, but as a rule do not get more than half a liter. There is no coal for dwelling houses. Children are bare-legged on the streets, shivering and blue to the lips with cold. Babies cry, and the exhausted mothers cannot nurse them. The situation is heartrending. The accompanying pictures show efforts that are being made to relieve the situation. Holland, Switzerland, and other countries are inviting thousands of children whom they agreed to feed and clothe. The American Relief Committee has furnished 20 million meals to Austrian children, and other countries are hastening to extend assistance. Photo Caption Children from starving Vienna arriving in Holland, where kindly organizations have volunteered to feed and care for a large number. When news of Vienna's desperate plight reached Berlin, the girls' schools of that city embarked on a campaign to gather food and supplies to be sent to the destitute people. The results of their work are shown in this Berlin market hall, where the goods are being prepared for shipment. Greatest German submarine testing tank now lying at anchor at Harwich, England. Harwich is the harbor where the German submarines were interned following their surrender in November of 1918. Sick and wounded Czech soldiers in a hospital at Tokyo. The Czechs had been fighting side by side with the Japanese in Siberia, and since the hospital facilities there were inadequate, they had been conveyed across the sea from Vladivostok to Tokyo. The Japanese, as well as Occidental nations, have their baby shows, 
and this sturdy infant, who is being weighed before the doctor under the supervision of the proud mother, took first prize in a recent competition at Tokyo. The Japanese have always been alive to the importance of infant care and hygiene, and are by no means behind Western peoples in that respect. Eamon de Valera, holding manuscript. The President of the Republic of Ireland, at City Hall, New York, January 17th, where he had just received the freedom of the city from Mayor Hyland. The mayor is on his right, and Judge Kohalan at left. Dental work is here shown being performed for the benefit of children in a New York public school. The schools now have dental parlors where the teeth of the children receive proper care. Students of the Columbia Dental College of New York do the major part of the work, under the supervision of instructors and with the aid of nurses. The importance of the teeth in the general health of the child is being more and more recognized, and this has received an added impetus from the revelations made during the draft when a surprising number of those examined were found defective in that respect. Side launching of the 9,600-ton steamer City of Sherman at the Pensacola Shipbuilding Company, Pensacola, Florida. She is the second steamer to be launched in that way, with steam up and sounding her own salute. She was 95% completed when launched. Big Steel Merchant Ship recently launched at Los Angeles, California, in the presence of the mayor, city officials, and government dignitaries. The city was accorded the privilege of naming the ship because of its record in the Victory Loan subscription, and promptly named the ship, The Angelus. American soldier having his shoes shined by Turkish boot black in Constantinople. The meeting of East and West is whimsically illustrated by this scene before the Mosque of Sultan Ahmed. The soldier is attached to an American mission in Turkey. This unusual picture was taken from a United States warship off the Murmansk coast, Russia, and shows the USS Eagle fighting its way through a sea of ice. All was not fighting while the American soldiers were in the Murmansk and Archangel sectors of Russia. An interested group of soldiers and sailors operating in that bleak and remote portion of the world is watching a baseball game between the Army and Navy at Murmansk. Diversions of this kind were necessary in order to maintain the morale of the troops, which was subject to special strain during the Russian operations. Relatives and friends of prisoners incarcerated in St. Anne's Prison, Archangel Russia, bringing baskets and bundles of clothes and provisions. Many of the prisoners are Bolsheviks taken by American troops. The United States troops have now returned from the Archangel District, and it has recently been announced that those in Siberia will also be withdrawn. Trial at Albany of Suspended Socialist Members of the New York Assembly General view of the Assembly Chamber in Albany during the trial of the right of the five suspended socialist members of the Assembly to occupy their seats. The trial, which has evoked enormous attention all over the country, promises to develop into a cause celebre. Eminent legal talent will appear on each side of the case. At the session of January 20th, the principal speakers on preliminary questions were Morris Hillquit for the Socialists and John B. Stanchfield and Martin W. Littleton for the Assembly. Charles E. Hughes and four colleagues appeared for the Bar Association, but were denied the right to participate in the proceedings. Lawyers for the defense of the suspended Socialist members of the Assembly, photographed on their arrival at the Capitol. Left to right are Messrs. Stedman, Hillquit, and Rowe. USS Pennsylvania, flagship of the Atlantic Fleet, now engaged in maneuvers and battle practice at Guantanamo Bay. Guantanamo is one of the four naval stations reserved to the United States by agreement with Cuba in 1901. During the Spanish-American War, the east shore of the bay was occupied by U.S. forces, who established their Fort Macala. Sailors on the flagship Pennsylvania raising the Union Jack as the anchor was being dropped at Guantanamo Bay. The Pennsylvania had sailed from New York on January 7th. Officers and crew standing at attention on the deck of the Pennsylvania, the flagship of the Atlantic Fleet, as Admiral Simpson comes on board to greet Admiral Wilson. Map showing the progress of the Soviet Ark, the Transport Buford, which left New York December 21st, carrying 249 men and women deported by the United States government because of their revolutionary activities. The voyage is reported to have been void of incident or disturbance. When the ship arrived at Hongo, Finland, the passengers were disembarked and entrained for Viborg, near the frontier of Soviet Russia. At Teryoki, a short distance from Viborg, the deportees crossed and were received with warm demonstrations of friendship by the Bolshevists on the further side. Government laboratory which samples and analyzes the contents of various concoctions and home brews to see whether they contain enough alcohol to bring them under the ban of the Prohibition Amendment. 
The laboratory is in the Treasury Department, where it has passed from the jurisdiction of the Internal Revenue Bureau to that of the Federal Prohibition Commission. Here are several stills, which, however, are legitimate ones, since they are owned and operated by the government. They are part of the laboratory which tests the contents of alcoholic drinks. The numerous substitutes for liquor in the form of hair tonics, patent medicines, and flavoring extracts will have to run the gauntlet of these retorts. Bags of seeds piled on Boston Common awaiting shipment to France, Belgium, and Great Britain. Charles Lathrop Pack, president of the American Forestry Association, with flag at right, is displaying posters showing itemized list of seeds being sent. The need of reforesting European countries is very great. First shipment of whiskey, rushed from the United States to avoid confiscation, being moved from the docks at Havana, Cuba by non-union Chinese coolies. When the liquor reached Havana, a strike of the stevedores was in progress, but haste was so imperative that the vessels left their cargoes on the docks. The coolies removed them later. Page of the Constitution of the United States being shown to emphasize an address on Americanism by Secretary Lansing. The precious document is kept in a fireproof safe with the Declaration of Independence, and guarded with the greatest care. Aeronautic Exposition and Mammoth Structure on the Champs-Élysées, Paris, which began on December 19, 1919, and ended on January 4, 1920. Among well-known types are seen the Farman, Breguet, Caudron, and Airco planes. The machine in the foreground is the Olivier Hydroplane on exhibition at the Aeronautic Exposition in Paris. The exposition was the largest of its kind ever attempted, and planes of all the leading countries except America were on view.